check the valves. So now we get into the tiny plug. So we're gonna go right in the middle of these numbers. So we're gonna like to start. Looks like we might have to be adjusting the valves. Go left, right. We have the exhaust here. The intake on this side. Zero right here. Point zero zero right here. Off the cams. Remove that bolt right there. These are numbered too. You want to take these off in that pattern, tighten them up in that order as well. Note that there's dowels down here, like that one that just fell out. You want to make sure you don't lose these. On these cams, they have little retainers as well that you want to take note not to lose. You do not want that down at the bottom of the motor. When we take a look at the cams, you want to make sure there's no rough surfaces on the journals, on the cam itself. Plug off. Plug looks pretty good. Okay. I'd always make sure you take these off in a crisscross pattern. I'm not sure, but in some cases on other bikes, these are actually a wear item because these bolts actually can like get longer, get pulled apart, and you actually have to take a measurement from the top of the bolt all the way down to the bottom of the uh, thread. Just pop them out, just like that. So on these cowies, they got two bolts up here. Allowance. Luckily on these, if, if you do round out the Allen, you got enough room to get a set of vice grips on there. Be a little tight, but you gotta pop the time chain a little bit. Jamming up the chain guides. Just like that. Heads off. So to inspect this a little bit, we're gonna pop it over. You also gotta note that there's two dowels right there. Those usually will stay in the cylinder, but you wanna make sure that. Gonna have your head gasket. Two dowels. Make sure you don't lose this copper washer right there, a little crush washer. Get the cylinder out of there. So you wanna take note of these dowels again. Make sure you don't lose them. But we can take a look at the cylinder in here. The cross hatching. You can just run your finger inside there like that. Just feel for any deep gouges. Up here, I'm seeing some uh, marks, but when I run my finger across, they, they're going away and I'm not feeling any deep gouges. So the cylinder looks like she is almost like brand new. With these cylinders, you want to be very careful if you hone them because they're Nicosil. So that Nicosil coating is very, very, very thin. And you don't want to go through that. And it's very easy if you take a ball hone or normal like hone for like a car. And you run that through there, it's very easy to cut through that layer. Then you're going to be down to bare aluminum. And when the cylinder gets too hot, it, it can lock up on, on you because of the uh, bare aluminum. So you just want to be very careful if you do decide to hone this. And also, if you hone it once, I would only use the cylinder for right after you hone it once. I wouldn't keep on re-honing it over like a few years. I would change the cylinder after the first time you hone it. See your crank down there. Now you're going to want to take and put 
paper towels or a rag, something clean. Don't put like a dirty, oily rag down there, but just to put something down there just to block off the bottom end. Get a feel for it first. I got it out now. Now, usually, when you put them in, you don't want to use pliers, but since we're not using this again, and I don't want to lose it down to the bottom end, even though we're not going to use it, if you don't know where it is, it might make you think that it's in the bottom end. Again, using pliers just because we're not using these parts again. I'm just going to pop that thing right out of there. Not, not a lot of wear there. That's good. There wasn't a lot of piss and slap. Burn pattern, again, looks good. Not a ton of carbon on here, so that's good. A feel for any gouges. Of course, there's wear, but it's a piston. It moves on this, so there's going to be, but you just don't want a ton of wear on this. So, check for playing your crank. What I'm doing here is I'm just lightly moving, trying to see if I can get it to move up and down. I'm not feeling it any play at all. Another way that you're going to know if you have a bad crank is in your oil filter. If you have any brass um, just shavings in there, um, that's usually from the bearing inside here. So if you start seeing like a ton of that pile up inside your uh, oil filter, I would definitely check check the crank because that's most, like, most likely going bad on you. Get oil on there very tight. And again, do this in a crisscross pattern. I know some people like cutting out cardboard and num or they number the bolts or that. Easy way just to, when you're putting this back together, to know which bolt is the right one. For example, you got a little bit longer one of a bolt there. You can put that bolt in there, right? Put that one in. And you can see they're all sticking out just, just about the same height. So that's a good way to know. Pop this off. Note that there's two dowels here as well. This one's kind of stuck in there, so I'm just going to leave it there for right now, but there's two dowels. Because map gas get things uh, hot very, very quick, and that's not exactly what we're going for. This little eight millimeter off right there that's just holding on your guide the timing chain let's put that aside fish this thing right out of here there you go we're all set now we're ready to go order some parts